This week in Jamaica Now, off the job, the police high command moves to sanction a union leader for alleged disrespectful comments. I have not seen the man nor woman that is going to lead me into fear so that I will retreat from doing what the membership have asked of me to do. Government and opposition square off over the move to change the constitution to increase the retirement age of the DPP and Auditor General. It has been on the cards from 2016, 2017. It is disrespectful to the Constitutional Reform Committee and it is a dark day for our country. Sorry, PNP President bows to pressure over comments likened to support for voter fraud. And veteran dancehall artist Mad Cobra nabbed in the U.S. on drug and gun charges. I'm Jovan Johnson and this is Jamaica Now. All eyes are on rank and defile members of the Jamaica Constabulary Force, JCF, and how they will respond to the suspension of their union leader, Corporal Rohan James, by the police high command. Corporal James, the chairman of the Jamaica Police Federation, which represents cops up to the rank of inspector, was interdicted this week for comments made on July 15 that the senior leadership of the JCF claims were disrespectful, unprofessional and unfitting of his office and rank. The comments came as Mr. James criticised the JCF leadership over a long-standing overtime pay dispute at a funeral for a former colleague. I also want to say to our high command and councils of deputies that the Federation is not going to be muzzled, intimidated, nor bamboozled. We negotiate with government, not with high command. The council of deputies have no moral authority to tell us what to do when a court orders that we are to be paid overtime work and for service that they should put in place a mechanism to capture ours so that the membership can be paid. I also want to say to High Command and to our Commissioner, God helps you if the membership is not paid their overtime come this month. I am tired of the abuse being meted out and believing that persons can call me to intimidate me. I have not seen the man nor woman that is going to lead me into fear so that I will retreat from doing what the membership have asked of me to do. On Friday, James filed a lawsuit seeking to quash the interdiction. Meanwhile, the opposition People's National Party has slammed the High Command for taking action against Corporal James. Spokesman on National Security Senator Peter Bunting says the party believes the actions may be violating Mr. James's right to freedom of expression. We call on the Commissioner to reconsider this action immediately. Corporal Rowan James, as the head of the Police Federation, has not only the right but also the duty to advocate for the welfare and interests of his fellow police officers. Expressing concerns about the upholding of a court order should not be grounds for punitive action, but rather seen as a responsible act in the interests of justice. The JCF did not give a date for a court of inquiry. It said Mr. James would be summoned to. Now, 25% of his salary has been cut, and he must also seek permission if he's to leave the island. Opposition leader Mark Golding has avoided possible censure in Parliament after withdrawing controversial comments on a political platform where he referenced dead persons in an appeal to PNP supporters to vote in upcoming elections. This comment on July 23 sparked outrage. Work has to be done. It's not going to happen so. We have to make sure that every comrade who voted for the People's National Party in 2011 and deliver the victory if they're still alive they must have a vote for Comrade Patrick Peter King when the election comes and even some who are not alive you know if them can be doing it no problem Rights group Jamaicans for Justice and the ruling Jamaica Labour Party condemned the comments noting that Jamaica has emerged from a long history of voter fraud now, initially, PNP General Secretary Dayton Campbell said Mr. Golding's comment was a light-hearted one that was reported on without proper context. 
that did not stop Government Minister Daryl Vaz from tabling a censure motion in Parliament on Tuesday. Whereas the member's conduct is not in keeping with the democratic principles to be expected by the members of the House of Representatives, whereas the member should forthwith be named and called upon to unequivocally apologize to the nation, failing which the matter should be referred to the appropriate committee of the House for suitable action. Less than 24 hours after the censure motion was tabled, Mr. Golding withdrew the comment. I made some remarks which were really off the cuff and were a response to some banter in the crowd. The remarks were intended to be humorous and were not intended to be taken seriously. I realize, however, that some people have interpreted those remarks as being serious statements of my position on the, on the matter. That is not the case, and I unreservedly withdraw and retract those remarks. I am fully committed to Jamaica having a free and fair electoral system so that our democratic elections are conducted to the highest standards. And the parliamentary opposition is considering challenging in court the government's decision on Tuesday to push through Parliament an amendment to the Constitution to increase the retirement age of the Director of Public Prosecutions, DPP, and the Auditor General by five years to 65. Government surprised the country with a move on Tuesday, which Justice Minister Delroy Chalk said was recommended by Cabinet in 2016. Unfortunately, the matter sat in the Ministry of Justice, sorry, in the Ministry of Finance, and only in recent times, Cabinet directed, and to be fair, the Minister of Finance looked at it and said, this is a constitutional matter, the Minister of Justice should do it, and Cabinet mandated that I should take it on. Once I got it, I really pushed and got it done immediately because I thought it was important. I'm very, very disappointed that the opposition and others should impute any motive why this amendment was done so quickly. It has been on the cards from 2016, 2017. Now, Mr. Chuck later clarified that the finance ministry had no role in the matter and that the bill was sent to that ministry in May 2023. But he did not explain why the change was not pursued in 2020 when DPP Paula Llewellyn's tenure was extended by three years when five was available. Speaking in Parliament on Tuesday, opposition leader Mark Golding argued that the change to the country's constitution should have been dealt with differently. We object strongly to what is happening here today with this constitutional amendment which has been brought here without prior notice to us, without any consultation with us, concerning provisions to do with the appointment or extension of tenure of the Director of Public Prosecutions and the Auditor General. In relation to those provisions, consultation with the Leader of the Opposition is required, whether for appointment or for extension. Yet we are amending those provisions without any prior consultation. Furthermore, the Constitutional Reform Committee, has, which is dealing with the reform of the Constitution, has not been seized with this matter, it has not been discussed there, they have been bypassed with this particular amendment. The Minister is indicating that this is pursuant to the amendment to the pensions legislation of 2017. But the attempt to, the first attempt to extend the tenure of the DPP arose in 2019. And that extension was for three years. We objected, my predecessor, objected strongly in writing with substantive reasons why we did not support that extension then. Nevertheless, the government has chosen to proceed in this way, to seek to amend the Constitution of Jamaica by bringing a bill, tabling it on the same day that they intend to debate it and pass it in the House. It is bad governance. It is disrespectful to the opposition. It is disrespectful to the Constitutional Reform Committee. And it is a dark day for our country. Government brought the amendment to Gordon House this week as the Parliament gets set for its summer recess. Sittings will resume in September. The same month, DPP Paula Llewellyn's extension granted in 2020 expires. Now, as the Senate debated the bill on Friday, news came that Senior Deputy Director of Public Prosecutions, Cathy Ann Pike, wrote to Prime Minister Andrew Holness urging him to halt the voting on the amendment and cause an investigation to be launched into the operations of the Office of the DPP.
The corruption trial involving former Education Minister Ruel Reed and the former Caribbean Maritime University CMU President Fritz Pinnock is set to continue in the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court. On Friday, the Supreme Court ruled that a stay on those proceedings is to be lifted, dealing a blow to the two men. They were seeking to quash Chief Parish Court Judge Chester Crooks' ruling that they have a case to answer in the multi-million dollar fraud matter. The men failed to convince the Supreme Court that the judge's decision to remove himself from the case because he was a student while Mr. Reed was head boy at Monroe College meant that the judge had a conflict of interest. Foreign Minister Kamina Johnson-Smith says a clerical error at the Jamaican Embassy in the U.S. resulted in Prime Minister Andrew Holness not being given diplomatic privileges at an airport in Florida recently. She said Mr. Holness was not subjected to a search or asked to remove his jacket or shoes, as had been rumored. Jamaica and the U.S. have played down reports of a diplomatic row over Jamaica's refusal to acknowledge a U.S. policy for persons in same-sex unions to be given diplomatic immunity. Jamaican law does not recognize same-sex unions. Dwight Bingham, the man who pleaded guilty to the January 2021 murder of former banker Angelo Garwood at a church, was sentenced to 45 years in prison this week. Mr. Bingham, who is of a Rose Heights address in Montego Bay, St. James, confessed to being paid $700,000 to carry out the hit on Mrs. Lowe Garwood, who was reportedly locked in a property dispute with relatives of her late husband. The main witness against Mr. Bingham was Leon Hines, the getaway driver who is serving a six-year sentence after pleading guilty to his part in the crime. The man who investigators had accused as a mastermind behind the killing, Javon Garwood, Mrs. Lowe Garwood's stepson, was freed after Mr. Bingham refused to testify. And in another high-profile case this week, a jury on Thursday found St. Mary laborer Andre Thomas guilty of the brutal killing of two American missionaries in 2016. 47-year-old Randy Hensel and 53-year-old Harold Nichols were found dead in St. Mary between April 30 and May 1, 2016. The 22-year-old convict will be sentenced on October 13. <laughs> Veteran dancehall artist Mad Cobra was released on bail in the U.S. on Wednesday, a day after being arrested and charged in South Carolina for alleged cocaine and gun offenses. American authorities say the 55-year-old was stopped for speeding, but a search of his BMW SUV resulted in the discovery of 2 kilograms of cocaine and a Beretta 9mm pistol. And that's it for this edition of Jamaica Now, your weekly review of the big news stories. Send us your comments at online feedback at greenerjm.com. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Jamaica Gleaner and on Facebook at Gleaner Jamaica. Like this video on our YouTube page, turn on your notification and subscribe today. I'm Jovan Johnson and before we go, Justin Wong and Michaela Morris are seeking your help for their two-week-old baby, Harmony. Let's hear why. Our daughter, Harmony Wong, she is admitted here at the Cornwall Regional Hospital in Montego Bay, St. James, where she is getting supportive care. She has a congenital heart condition, so that is a birth defect. She was born like that, and she requires immediate emergency surgery. She is diagnosed with hypoplastic left heart syndrome. When I first found out um, <laughs> frustration, um, sad naturally because i thought i was totally blown off my feet i thought everything was fine i'm having a normal healthy baby as i was sent home nothing was diagnosed you know the test and the the ultrasound didn't show anything so it brought about a lot of frustration and it really swept me off my feet but i'm doing my best to be strong and get the needed help so she can do the surgery which she requires now the doctors advise us that that care is not provided in Jamaica and she has to go to a first world country. So they would have referred her to Jackson Memorial Hospital in Florida where the doctors there, they agree to treat her and they need money in order to administer her treatment. We were told that she cannot, she cannot survive, she cannot live unless she get the surgery done. And we were not, and we could not have prepared for such a major surgery. 344,000 um, US, excluding the cost for air ambulance, that is, that is, um, that is extremely overwhelming. We could not have prepared for that.